Sabre fans from Sabre land. Jimmy is back to quickly go over a really, really awesome hilt uh, that was sent to me by Shane at the Sabre Bay for a chassis design. Uh, this is the War Sabres Starkiller V4. It's, <clears throat> excuse me, it's an absolutely awesome, well-constructed hilt. Uh, a lot of good engineering went into this, a lot of forethought, um, it's maybe a little bit too much in some areas, who knows, uh, that's down to each individual person to uh, think about when they're installing it, but it's a great hilt, a, an intense install, <clears throat> and you have to pay attention to the wiring diagram that is on the Warsavers website page if you're using the PCBs. Uh, right, so I've currently got the Sabre Bay blade plug in there, pretty awesome. The emitter, oh I should really get the box and show you from scratch what I've got. What comes in the box anyway. So here's the two things in the box I haven't used. Let's get rid of that. I won't show you the box because it's got my name and address on it. <laughs> so, your hilt comes with a load of PCBs. Oh, the sun is shining really bright. Um, that you can use for your install. <clears throat> of which, if you want to make it simple, you do use those PCBs. You don't have to, but considering they're there to help you out, um, they are useful. You don't have to use the full extension of the PCBs whilst installing it. So you get a whole load of PCBs that come with the, with the hilt. You get two different emitters. You get a plain aluminium uh, emitter, and then you get this heat stained steel version. As you can see, this just unthreads and threads back on. Um, nice and easy, good idea, looks great. Uh, what you have here, this, it can be used as your blade retention screw. It's pretty cool. Also got a grub screw up here, which you can use as a blade retention as well. Uh, you've got like a spring-loaded glass eye here, but it's not to actuate a, a switch or anything. It just shines through um, and the spring ensures it's pressed forward. Uh, still pretty cool. You've got your switch box at the back here, uh, which I have got the switch PCB set installed in there. I didn't bother putting the plunger spring pad thingy majobby in because I really didn't need it. Kind of the PCB holds itself on really well as is. And then at the front we've got the beautiful machined crystal chamber with the included crystal. Very nice. It's a plastic crystal but oh it's great. It's wonderful. Looks the business. Uh, we've got a nice neck area here. Come down, we've got the four fins around the outside. Got some copper plates here, all the way around. Cover tech wheel, which I haven't actually done the test. To actually make sure it goes onto a cover tech, but yep, no problems whatsoever. There you go. And then we've got a nice sound vented pommel with hidden sound venting. This is great, great. Full force and engineering. There are some visible screws uh, where I wouldn't really expect them to be, but he's done it like this to aid the assembly, and it's great. It, it, it's well done. So you've got some tiny screws here along the grips to avoid having to use tape or glue. I mean, I, honestly, I don't mind a bit of 3M tape on assembly, considering they're also retained down here beneath the pommel by screws down here. But still, as I say, I've said it before, that doesn't bother me. At least it isn't magnets. <laughs> so, really cool, great looking hilt. Really fantastic. Uh, Shane sent it to me for uh, a chassis design. So, we'll quickly go over the install without opening it all up and showing you all of the solder joints and everything else. 
Um, this is an interesting design here. This is the only floor I would consider a floor. Uh, it's not actually a floor, it's a nitpick, which is more on me, not on, on Alex at War Savers at all. Because this is a grub screw that retains itself into grooves within the thread, I'm just waiting for somebody to do that up incorrectly, uh, pre uh, tighten that down onto the thread and ruin their threads. Um, and an O-ring is used up here as well to ensure that when you do up your this whole grip section here and you choose the orientation you want it to be at, if you chose a position that isn't put and it's not pushing up against the O-ring, all you're doing when you tighten that up is pushing your whole lower body on the on the tilt, on the piss. So what I do when I do mine up is I make sure it's pressing against the O-ring and you can feel a bit of resistance doing it. Line up a fin in line with the grub screw that retains your crystal chamber, and then gently, gently do up your grub screw. And if it goes down nice and smooth, you know you've not hit a thread. If all of a sudden, like, if I turn a little bit, you can, might be able to tell. Oh, maybe I haven't turned it enough. Like if I go there, and if I gently turn this, this is the only thing you've got to watch out for. Gently turn it, and it. I'm gently trying to put some force on it and the grub screw is not going down all the way. Make sure you back it off, check your alignment, getting the fin lined up with the screw for the crystal chamber, and then put it back down again. Gentle pressure. Don't forget to undo that screw when you're trying to turn the grip off. Uh, unscrew the grip, I should say. Because again, you'll just ruin all of your threads and you've ruined your hilt. So just unscrew that very gently. You don't have to take it all the way out, just enough so it's still held in by the grip, but it's enough to release the thread and voila. Really neat. So the reason he's done that is for the orientation, so you can clock your orientation whichever way you want to, and the O-ring's there, but if you found the threads led to the orientation being lower than the shoulder shut off, then you've still got a compression there to help keep the grip as straight as possible for when you're doing that grub screw up to avoid it kicking over and rubbing against your chassis, rubbing against your install, which you don't want. So just bear that in mind, guys. Um, but again, it's a good resolve to that orientation situation. If you're not bothered by it, if you're not bothered about orientation, right? you, don't, you can just remove that grub screw entirely just tighten it up until it gets to the point where you can feel it putting enough pressure on the o-ring and then you're fine it's not going to come off unless you physically turn it but just watch out just watch out and um, this four thoughts into the install very clever uh, alex at war savers um, is Obviously extraordinarily talented, um, puts a lot of thought into his sabers. And I am a big War Sabers fan. The Karl Katarn hilt, I love, one of my absolute favorites. The uh, Revented hilt, again, super slim, super nice. I think he did that in collab collaboration with Stock. And that's a beautiful, beautiful, simple hilt. Um, yeah, Alex is one of the best at what he does. And, Everything that he, he he makes proves that point. Uh, so the install, you have a PCB on the back here, which I've already shown you, which has your two switches, uh, which is, is held down by two screws and has the uh, USB connection here, right here. So you can wire in an extension from your profi board so it can be charged or edited, your profi config can be uploaded through this position here. If you are going to use it as a charging port, you have to buy the charging extension PCB that doesn't come with the hilt. Um, equally, if you want to use this as your USB edit point, you have to use this PCB 
here, which will plug into your profit board down here. Like so, I've got enough room in there to plug that in. Plug this into the other extension uh, PCB, which is there to, which is this what this one wires up into to control the accent lights in it as well. Um, so there's a lot of wiring up. There's a lot of near pixel data lines to wire up. Uh, I wired mine up so the crystal chamber PCB that lights up the crystal itself is independent from the back PCB that it can be controlled by. So there's another PCB running along the inside back of the crystal chamber as well, which if you snip off the data line, um, which on my one was the sense pin, always check your PCB markings before you snip pins. Uh, but I snipped that pin off and wired in my own data line. And so crystal's independent, independently controlled by the com config. Back PCB behind the crystal chamber is an independent, independently controlled config. Uh, the pixels on here are independently controlled through the config. And then my emitter PCB is independently controlled through the config. So you've got, if you use, if you decide to use the crystal chamber as an independent uh, PCB to light up the chamber, you have four data lines in total, which I'm trying to remember if I've had to do that on many hilts before. I think it's only been done, I've only had to do it myself on hilts that had light up switch panels on the sides and crystal chambers. Maybe. <laughs> trying to remember. I have done it before, but it's a lot of wires. Um, so I'm showing you how to do it without having to use the extension here. You do have to use the intermediate control PCB that is fitting in this area here, uh, which will control uh, controls the wire up from this board here to your Profi board. Um, if you're using other boards, uh, best of luck to you. The Profi is the way to go on this install. That's how the PCBs have been designed to be used with. Um, yeah, I'm not. So I was speaking to Shane last night about CFX. I don't install CFX. Uh, the only reason I don't, I haven't ever installed the CFX is that those boards are super wide, um, not great for chassis designs, <laughs> especially when they're behind batteries. Um, nothing wrong with the boards themselves, I'm sure, but uh, I've always stuck to Profi, Golden Harvest, V3, and Verzo uh, when they first came out. Um, but this one, it feels like it's designed specifically for the Profi board. So, if you were to purchase the chassis from the Sabre Bay, my chassis design, um, it will come with a PCB holder that holds a stock V3 emitter PCB. Um, and it will either Depending on your printing tolerances, it'll be a slight push fit into the top of the chamber, which is what it sits in. Um, or if you find that your printing tolerance is a little bit loose, uh, a bit of double-sided sticky tape will do the job nicely. Um, yeah, so that was nice and easy to wire up. You wire that up into the back PCB behind the crystal chamber, which then the PCB underneath the crystal chamber has the three pogo pins, one of which I snipped off. Uh, so my positive five volts and my ground are both connected to that back PCB. That all wires up into the Profi board. And then here, you've got your two switches from your Profi board, the ground and your uh, your positive, negative, sorry, ground and data line as well, wiring up in there. On top of that, I designed the chassis to have an optional OLED screen, depending on which variant you purchase has a high amp kill switch, um, 18650 removable battery with spring-loaded plungers, uh, sorry, just spring-loaded tabs, I should say, and a 20, 28 millimeter base speaker. So I designed the chassis that if this, you find that you have to wind it up all the way up to get the orientation you want, that the speaker is still not touching and distorting against the bottom of the pommel. Um, because it will be different from hilt to hilt on every single one. You know, it's only a smidge up and down, 
but I had to make sure it was nice and clear. Now the reason I've wired my profi board upside down is the extension um, board uh, in this area here, installed under here, is still available for me to plug this in to then wire this through very simply and plug that into the bottom of the profi board. Then I can use the access to this, this access port here to access the profi board without having to take the grip off. But I use removable batteries and I charge my batteries outside of the hill. But he's made that option available for you. And if you want to charge your, your board in hill, uh, charge your battery in hill, you can buy the additional PCB from somewhere else. Um, I just don't deal with that. It's an additional wiring, um, a little bit unnecessary for my personal preference. I'm just happy to not even use this um, and just remove the battery and charge it up outside of the hill. Right, enough waffle. Let's remove my battery placer. Grab an 18650 protected battery. Flip it on. So, Profi 6.7. Full battery, I've been charging my batteries. <laughs> been needing to do that for a while. All right, OLED screen is working nicely. We've got nice boot sound out of the speaker. Um, so, I'm not sure how well it's appearing on camera, but if you can see the blue, that's coming from the bottom of the crystal and lighting up the crystal. And then I've got a nice green turbine effect going up the back. And on the back PCB here, I've just got it going up and down in white for the moment. If I turn it on, I might need to turn down the sensitivity. So now the back PCB is now fast turbine yellow, and now it's the crystal is now matching the blade and no longer pulsing. And at the back here, I've got like an overheating effect on the back PCB here, and actually got a nice blade light up here. And the switches work absolutely lovely. Uh, of course it gets louder if I've got the pommel on. And let's change our sound font. Uh, so both of these sound fonts are from the Secret Apprentice uh, bundle available from Jesse at Kyberphonic, uh, which are the Borsch Unleashed sound fonts for the Sabre. As you can see here, this is the dark side version. Got a red crystal and a purple turbine. Same effects here as well as previous. Red crystals to stop pulsing, turns to solid red to match the blade, and then I've got orange as the back PCB fast turbine. Doesn't very it doesn't show up very well on camera, but in person it looks amazing. Crystal chamber is great, absolutely fantastic. And let's see. If I have a short tester blade, I'll put it down there just to show it off a little bit. I may have done that in too tight. Try not to knock it around absolutely everywhere. I can't tell if that's down or not, but no, not yet. So. There we go. There we go. Right. So, Jedi, I'm ready. This is 
lovely. This is a great hill. Alex at War Savers did a fantastic job. I'm uh, a big fan. Continues to impress no matter what. Excuse me, just dropping that off. Yes, big fan. Well done, Alex. Guys, if you want this, go get it from, I think his website might be sold out, War Savers directly. I can't remember. But go check it out on the Saber Bay. Chassis prints are available from the Saber Bay as well. Go to the War Sabers website to check out the wiring diagram. You will need it. It does help. Um, read it. Soak it all in before you start doing your install. Uh, it does help you out a lot. I hope you enjoy this quick. Whoa! Took me by surprise. Hey. Um, I hope you enjoy this quick overview of a really fantastic hilt by a very, very talented member of the community. Thanks, guys. Catch you in the next video. Bye.